So this is going to be a super basic overview of how the radar works uh, in a fighter jet. This is not detailed. I'm just trying to get people to be able to lock onto targets and figure out why they can't see certain targets that they know they can see in the HSD. So uh, that's all we're doing in this video. If you want more detailed description of how this works and why it works and uh, the nitty gritty, uh, I think Growling Sidewinder has an awesome uh, tutorial and video on how radar works and it's uh, really good. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, what I'm doing here is just quick, easy, simple. I'm not going to go into things like this, uh, the, the atmospheric bounce off and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. But I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty. Uh, this is just to show uh, why you're not seeing what you should be seeing uh, and uh, how to make your radar look that direction. All right, so this is C Deadly's F-15 radar simulator, uh, and I'm going to put a link to the uh, to this in the description so you can take a look at it. I recommend this. This is great visualization of how the radar works. Um, I know it's for the F-15, but the concept's the same regardless of your air, uh, airframe. So you can see here, this is what you would see on your MFD for your radar, and you can see we can see three targets. But there are actually five targets. We can see there's two here that we're not seeing on our MFD. Now, why is that? Well, because it's below the radar cone, so it can't it can't see them. Now, if they are further out, like right here, even at the same altitude, now I can see them because that cone, if you click and drag here, not only is it spread this way, it's also spread high and low. And the further out you go, your spread's going to be much greater. You can go from uh, negative feet to like 40 foot, uh, 40,000 foot spread. So uh, anything from the ground all the way to 40,000 feet out at here, out here at uh, like 80 miles away. But the closer you get, your spread's only going to be a couple thousand feet if you're really, really close, right? So we put these guys uh, right there or so, and we can't see them anymore. Now they're not showing up on our on our MFD. If we move them back, look at your MFD. Look at this. And you can see he's showing up. Move him forward. Can't see him. Can see him. Can't see him. And we can click and drag inside this tool and see where he is. So we can bring him up, but he's still outside the cone. We can't lock on. I can lock on to these guys because... Well, they're within the cone. Um, we can move this around, this uh, target cursor, and you'll notice that the closer the target cursor is to the bottom of the MFD, the closer it is to your jet. So this is distance away from your jet. This is not altitude. This isn't like super high and this is super low. No, you're looking out away from you or closer to you. All right. So if I'm watching my uh, HSD and I see that there are two targets that should be right about here, they're closer to me, but I'm not seeing them on here, it's probably because they're below or above. So we can bring them above my radar cone as well, and I can't see them. So in order to see them, I'd have to raise my cone to where now I can see that guy and I can actually lock onto him. Uh, but now I can't see anybody else. I only see the one. So I lower it, now I can see those three guys way out there, but I still can't see the guy that's closer to me uh, near the ground. So I'm bring it down, now I can see him, but I can't see uh, those guys out uh, further out. Uh, I'm gonna put the link in the description so you can take a look at this. It's a lot of fun to really get a, a better idea of how the radar wor uh, works, to visualize it in your head when you're looking at the MFD and uh, not seeing what you should be seeing or you're trying to click on you're trying to lock on to a uh, a, a, a tracker target that that uh, AWAX is passing to you uh, and you can't lock onto it because you don't have it on your actual radar it's just being represented by what AWACS can see so so this will give you a visualization of uh, what that's like and and uh, why you're seeing what you're seeing on your MFD I highly recommend it. Definitely take a look. Play around with it. All right, so there's a couple things we need to map um, in order to continue with this uh, this video real quick. So the display management switch, DEMUS, and that's uh, down left, right, up. We also need the radar cursor switch 
and we need the target management switch, the Temus switch. Oh, and there is one more that you'll need. And I've got this mapped to a uh, an axis. I've just got a little knob for it. The antenna elevation knob. All right, so here we are in the cockpit. We're gonna start by making sure that our master arm is set up to master arm. Go to air to air. We've got our aim 120C selected. Go back to the HSD so I got that uh, data link up so I can see what the AWACS is showing me. There's AWACS right there. Whatever AWACS sees is going to pass on to me and I can see that. Uh, so, first thing you're going to do, if you see not soy, which means this is not your sensor of interest, use your DEMUS switch, the display management switch, hit DEMUS down and that'll make this your soy, your sensor of interest. Right now you can see that we have the uh, radar scanning out to 40 miles. This birthday cake is my waypoint, waypoint 2, it's the waypoint I've got selected. Uh, this is the radar cursor. I'm scanning from eight, Angels 18 to Angels 41. Use the radar cursor switch up, down, left, and right to move this up, down, left, and right. All right. Then you have your TEMIS switch, the target management switch. TEMIS up to lock, TEMIS down to unlock. TEMIS left quick to do an IFF scan. TEMIS left long to do a full scan of, of uh, the area that you're, or the, uh, not the bars, this right here, how far out. So let's do 80 miles, here we go, and we can see uh, AWACS over here is giving us a track on something. There it is. But notice there's no white uh, tracker yet. Now I'm scanning Angels 0 to Angels 58 at this distance here. This is uh, probably like 50 miles. There it is. So the four bar scan here means this thing is going left, right, left, right, four times going up to the bottom, then back up to the top to the bottom, up to the top, down to the bottom, one, and then down, two, down, three, down, four. And it goes up to the top and does it over again. I can change that to one bar, where it's only going to scan one spot, uh, but I want to make sure that I have a really widespread cone here. So zero all the way to 58. And you see if I go to bar, bar one, it's a smaller section of sky that I'm looking at. So I want to do four bars. It takes longer, but I get more of the sky to look at. So right now I can see these guys way back here. Uh, and I've got this guy up here. Now I'm about to lose him. In fact, I think I just did lose him. Now why did I lose him? Well, I lost him because now I'm scanning at this point And uh, the data link from AWACS is still giving me a marker, but I don't have a track because he's below my cone. My cone is only from angels 11 to angels 47, right? So this is where you use that antenna elevation knob and lower the antenna. So now I'm lowering it and now I can track him. So I'm actually tracking three below the ground, 2,000 feet below the ground up to 27,000 feet. And I can track him. But I just lost these guys. They're there because of my data link with AWACS, but I have no track on them. So I'd have to raise the antenna. And I'll actually get a track on them again. If you want to lock on, Temus switch up, which locks on to that target. And you can start firing away. So I hope this helps. I hope this... Uh, Help someone out there that's having trouble figuring out why I've got tracks on my uh, radar screen. I got a little red triangle, but I can't lock on. It's probably because your antenna's elevation is wrong, and you're not actually looking at the uh, uh, at the at the bogey with your radar. So use that antenna elevation knob to go up and down to get it. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to the number underneath that triangle because that's that's the altitude that AWACS has given you. This this bogey is at angel 29. So raise your antenna until 29 is within that range and you'll get a track. Once you have a track, you can lock and fire. Hope this helps.